Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I'm going to show you how you can use a specific technique in asynchronous programming in C-Sharp to actually speed up your application's request to I.O. calls that might be an API, a network call, a call to the drive, anything. It mostly has to do with when you're calling things that don't actually depend on other things you need to do in the future in that single um, method and that's what we're going to be investigating in this specific video. The idea behind this video can be applied to many, many, many other use cases in your C-sharp code, but I'm going to use that just so I can easily show you the point of why you might want to do that. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you're subscribing to the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So what do I have here? Well, I have an API here first, I'm going to show you this, which just has a single controller, and this is sort of a fake controller. What happens here is I have three endpoints, one for Twitter, one for GitHub, and one for YouTube, and this is supposed to imitate the API calls to those services. Imagine I have a service that needs to build a profile for Nick Chapsis, and some of the data might be in our database, and, and some of it it might need to be retrieved by the YouTube API, the GitHub API, and the Twitter API. This will imitate that just so I don't have to deal with actually getting throttled or rate limited or getting API keys. So my console application that I'm going to be showing you in a second will actually just be calling this API, which is running locally here. Uh, it's going to return the same data every single time, but it also has an artificial one second delay. The delay for an API call is kind of inflated, but that's intentional to show you the point of why this is important. And I just inflated a bit the request duration to show you why it makes a difference. So I'm going to close that and go back to the main console app, which has an HTTP client, and then it makes three calls. One to the YouTube API, which is just our own API, then the Twitter API, and the GitHub API. Those things are expected to take one second each, and they are weighted properly because we don't want to block the thread while we're doing this. Even though this is a weighted, it doesn't mean that it can actually go to the next line before this line is completed. It just means that the thread can go do other stuff while this is waiting a response. And I'm going to actually execute this real quick just so you can see what happens. So this is running and I'm making those three calls and as you can see the results are back. I'm getting the values from that API and it's done in three seconds and the 123 milliseconds that you see the extra is just overhead um, for all the other operations but the three milliseconds is because each of those controllers will respond or actions will respond in at least one second before you get the response back just to imitate some networking delay. Now this is a use case that can be significantly sped up. The key to the speed up is that in order to build the final model, the user profile model, I don't need the YouTube response to go to the Twitter response to go to the GitHub response. Those things can happen at the same time and that's exactly what we're going to be optimizing on. What you can do, a good practice you can use, is remove the await and get those as tasks. Now those tasks won't actually start at this point. You're just going to have a reference to a task that returns that value. And here I could say await the, the task. Now this is not all we're going to do because that wouldn't actually uh, make much of a difference. So now we have this and we have our three tasks broken down here and what you can use is a method that lives in the task class called when all. And this method accepts either parameters or an enumerable of multiple tasks. So you can say YouTube subscriber tasks here, Twitter followers task and then GitHub followers task. And now if I execute this again, all those things will be awaited at the same time. And since they don't depend on each other, I don't need to get a response on one to do the other. They can happen very, very fast. You can see that I only have the one second delay now. Even though those have one, two, three, and it's three calls, they are done in parallel. They're not done sequentially. It's still asynchronous. So don't, don't mix that up, but it's a task aggregated there. So we don't have to wait for each one of them to respond. This also means that you don't really need the await here. You could actually uh, just use the dot result and don't be uh, worried about the uh, potential for a deadlock, which is what this might remind you of. Result can only cause a deadlock if it's not computed when called because it will just invoke the flow. However, if you just do dot result, 
and the thing is computed and I can actually show you that by, by the time we actually get here um, the result exists it's not something that needs to be uh, triggered the um, if I go to the yeah the is completed value is true so we have the result back then you can use it if you're worried you don't have to use it the only drawback in this is that you're gonna be creating a state machine that will um, basically go from start to finish because it does have a result um, so you're gonna generate more compiled code for no specific reason but if you feel more comfortable having that you can totally do it but as you can see this thing responds as if you only had this one call because it's done at the same time now there is a problem and I'm gonna show you quickly what the problem is with an example down here I'm actually going to just comment this out and I'm going to create a new task completion source and that's going to be a new task completion source that returns I don't know, an integer whatever it doesn't really matter and then in this task completion source I'm gonna add uh, I'm gonna say try add exception and I'm gonna add a couple of exceptions here exception array and I'm gonna say new exception this went wrong first and then the next one this went wrong later now what I can do is I can say var result equals task completion source dot task and I can say await task dot when all with just one thing and if I run this look what happens here you are only getting the first thing that went wrong so if other things in that task had an exception you will never know about it so when you're using task.whenall you actually want to handle that if you want to get the full picture of the exceptions in a different way and in order to do that I usually create the following class I have um, I'm gonna just call it this uh, class x just because it's here uh, you can also make it as an extension method but here's what you can have so we're gonna have the same signature as what the, the normal when all has but instead of actually just awaiting all, we can say var all tasks equals task dot when all. And we don't await it here. We just effectively aggregate them. And then we open a try. And here's where you say return await and all tasks. And you catch this exception, but you don't care about that exception. So you just ignore it. And then the all tasks if this has thrown an exception should have an aggregate exception and that's what you want to actually throw here and I don't think that this can actually be null um, so you can just say throw a new exception this can't possibly happen I never had this actually throw I don't know if there's some way this can be null but in my experience it won't so that's how I approach it and then what I do is instead of using the task dot when all I'm using task x dot when all and if I execute this now you see that I get both the first thing that went wrong and the the thing that went wrong later so I'm getting an aggregate exception and I'm printing everything in that aggregate exception instead of just the first thing that threw and this is what you'd have to do and let me just uh, remove this maybe put it at the bottom and comment it out in case you want to check out the source code for this video I'm gonna go up and comment this and now if this thing artificially throws an exception so I say um, throw new exception boom and I restart the API here so I'm gonna stop that and rerun it and I go here and I change task when all with task ext when all then I execute this again it threw and I get the aggregate exception not just the first thing that throws I'm getting all the description all that back and if there was more things throwing there I would not miss them so in this use case we made this perform three times faster because we didn't actually need to depend on each request we could just await them at the same time and then finally get the values and return the thing and we found a way to throw the actual exception the aggregate exception instead of just the first thing that threw in there making this easier to debug and detect what went wrong you should probably be using uh when all with caution and make sure that 
where you're using it, it actually does make sense. But this is a very valid scenario where I've actually used it many, many times to significantly provide better performance in my application when things don't depend on each other. That's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.